All right, this is the Nate Man coming at you live from sunny Madison, Wisconsin, and you're listening to The Sound on Wolf Out Radio. We've got a big fat stack of Fleetwood Mac to flip for the tip top of the hour, but first it's time for our special segment for all the lovers out there. That's right, put your lips together for the sound of love, where we take questions from forlorn lovers and saucy suitors, so the censor better let a finger linger on that beep button, because things might just get a little sexy, or, as always, I might just violate the terms of any one of my many non-disclosure agreements. All right, you know what I'm talking about. Although, to be clear, legally, you do not know what I'm talking about. But you're not here to listen to the legalese leaving my lips. You're listening for the language of love, and I ain't talking about French unless you're talking about kissing. All right! No, you're looking for more than that lackluster lip service, that whirling dervish of smacks and smooches. You're looking for answers. And I'm ready for your questions. Caller, you're on the air. Hello? The Nate Man? Yes, this is the Nate Man, coming at you live from sunny Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, okay, um... This isn't Jeopardy, Alex, so if you want answers, you're gonna have to ask a question. Ha! <laughs> My name is Daryl. Uh, okay, I was calling you Alec, like Alex Trebek, Daryl, but since I didn't phrase it in the form of a question not unlike my second rap talk rock album, Do the Nate Man, you are off the hook. Haha, <laughs> right. Uh, all right, there's a all girl right, well, there is the oh, Nate oh, Man oh, there right. on the, uh, taking over the airwaves, a different DJ uh, that you didn't expect to hear, perhaps. Uh, but I'm back, and Nate Chappell, who is also the Nate Man, is sitting here right before me all on right. this mic, the WRT mic. Good morning. Good morning, Jonathan. All right, hey, thanks for coming down. I gotta say, this is my rather informal introduction to uh, the last show on Earth, which is your show, and while you're here talking about your live semi-fictional comedy talk show broadcast from your own living room. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I encountered you at the Rock and Jump, where I had taken uh, my son Charlie and and my nephew Ben, and uh, like you do around winter break, and, you know, there's not much to do for the adult there. You play Scrabble on your phone, you wander around, and, I mean, I wasn't jumping, and you're there for an hour. And so you look for something amusing. And here were, there was this puzzle. There was a puzzle to figure out. There were two seemingly grown men. It was very hard to tell their age because they sort of, like, were dressed like young athletes, but looking a little more grizzled than that. Mm-hmm. And they were taking the jumping very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know whether there was some weird psychological backstory going on or... And well, then I yes. noticed they were being videotaped as well. So then it seemed like it might be theater, but it seemed like you guys were... I would say maybe like that I just hadn't noticed that rock and like jump... The trampoline jumping had in rock and jump style had become an Olympic sport and you were training for it. Um Yes, uh, that was uh, well on the show. Our favorite, um, our favorite like game show is called uh, Monster Slayer. It's a fictional game show that's kind of like uh, American Ninja Warrior. Uh, and so I was trying to get on the show, and my switcher, my Johnny, uh, was my trainer. So we went there to, uh, you know, really. Uh, practice some flipping and we really nailed it i think you did you did synchronized flipping Mm -hmm, we did uh you did you were you guys were very like i could tell that you were proud of the progress you were making there was raised fists oh absolutely there's a lot of celebration um a lot of flipping backwards forwards uh bouncing i'm actually still recovering from an injury i sustained that day but you know, slowly but surely, I'm getting better. You were older than a lot of the people. A lot of mm-hmm. I'd say the median age of the jumpers was about eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could. You're yeah, older we, than that, I think. Yeah, I am a little older than that. Um, and, but it was great because we could really own our space. You know, because I was significantly bigger than at least half of the. Uh, they kind of had to get jumpers. out of your way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, well, you waited in line mostly. I noticed. Uh, yeah. So it's the last show on Earth, mm-hmm. and uh, how do people watch this show? The last show on Earth is uh, you can. There's a bunch of ways to watch it. Uh, it's we broadcast live to YouTube every Wednesday night at 7:30 Central Time, and uh, you can watch it on. So you can watch it on YouTube. You can go to thelastshowonearth.org. That's our website. Um, we're very nonprofit at this point, so uh, you can go there to uh, find our episodes, and they stream live to YouTube. And then immediately afterwards, that same link is good. Um, 
forever in perpetuity. It, it, it's sort of interesting that when there was a time when there was TV, there was broadcast TV and even cable and whatever, but but it was this big thing and there was a big line on you're on that or you're not. And then there was a moment where you could go from your computer to your TV with your Apple TV or whatever you want to put on your Chromecast or a HDMI cord or whatever. And you could take like whatever it is off the web and put it on your TV. So now I, g- I guess what I'm saying is the line has been blurred a little bit and a show that doesn't have a big production company or network behind it now can sort of like follow the same path to your TV as as Game of Thrones, right? Absolutely. And, yeah, you know, we can be watched on demand. Um, it's really nice. It's kind of given, the, it's switched around a little bit that um, we've been given a little more power and ability to put my face on the internet, um, basically. So, uh, you know, we have a studio, we have a whole set and everything. Like, it's DIY, but we take it, you know, uh, we do some... You have a switcher. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, we have a guy, Johnny. He's my kind of my sidekick, and also he's the one that runs the computer, runs the stream, switches the cameras, rolls in videos and graphics and everything. And then we've also... My wife, is uh, Vivian, is the camera operator, and she also does craft services, so... Uh, we have uh, each week we have uh, different guests on improv actors and comedians that come on and usually play characters, um, and then uh, afterwards we uh, sit down with them. We have a homemade dinner and we watch the show. That's back. what craft services is. That's what craft See, services is. Not in the is. industry. Yeah. Sure, like oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> so, what do you hope for the? Well, what tell us a little bit about what the show's about. What are the different segments? Um, the show is uh, basically like a, it has the format of a late night talk show, um, but it's on earlier um, and it's shorter and it's funnier. Uh, so we have a, a, a short monologue that I do off the top of the show, and then there's a sketch in the middle. We have a news segment. Um, we, we have a guest segment, and then with the guest, we have a game that we play at the end. And the game could change? Oh, yeah, the game's different every time. I usually just make it up. We have a theme for each episode, um, and the themes are determined alphabetically, essentially. So our seasons go 26 episodes in alphabetical order. So we pick a theme, and then the game will have something to do with the theme. Each segment has something so to do with the So in the, 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 the place I met you and recruited you to this show, you were playing the game for that particular show? No, actually, that whole show was kind of about a game. So the, if, the eventual game was Monster Slayer, um, but the whole episode was about me trying to get on the game show. If you're going to go pay the entry fee at Rock and Jump, you might as well get a whole show out of it. Yeah, exactly. All yeah, right. efficiency. And then what do you hope to, uh, like, where does the show go? I know, like, in music, uh, you can now record your own stuff in your own house, in your home studio, and you can build up a big audience, and then you can hope that somebody gives you a record contract, or you can just skip that whole thing and mm-hmm. become really famous that way. Do you have plans for world domination? Um, Yeah, we don't have specific plans for world domination, but a general plan, that's our mission statement, is just world domination. Um, But, uh, yeah, we just plan on growing our uh, pack a little bit. Like, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with our community. We have a small group of rabid fans, um, and we need to get them some help, Um, either a doctor or a veterinarian. There's foam everywhere, and so we need to get more people involved so that we can, uh, you know, grow the pack and... Help those poor rabid people. All right. And uh, let people know again how they can see the show. You can see the show by going to the last show on earth dot org or alternatively, um, if you want to go to the last show on earth on Facebook, you'll always get updates in your feed like the page. You can go to uh, on Twitter. We're at Wolf Out TV and on Instagram as well. And on YouTube, it's Wolf Out TV. That's our network. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nate Chapel from The Last Show on Earth. Check it out online. Uh, it's pretty funny. And thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.